Hey guys, it's Dr. Berg here. I wanted to create a video on how, what to do to actually handle this skin problem here and here. There are things that you can do, but there's some mistakes that people make. Uh, the first thing you need to know is that hormonally at age 38, things start shifting in the body. Now, over a period of a few more years, when you hit 50, now things really bottom out. So during the menopause time period, which is actually 52, but it can happen like 48, it can happen 56, hormonally, the ovaries stop working, okay? So there's a backup organ, and the backup organ is the adrenals on top of the kidney. You have two of them. And so you have this huge shift from ovarian hormones to adrenal hormones, okay? If there's any problem with those adrenals before menopause, Everything is magnified. You get hot flashes, you have bone loss, you have a lot of loose skin, things like that. But really, this is a loss of collagen, okay? And that comes from a loss of certain hormones. So I'm gonna explain what hormones. Um, all of these hormones decrease during menopause. Testosterone, which is more lean body mass. DHEA, that's an anti-stress hormone. That's kind of like a, a pre-hormone that gives you all the other hormones. And it's made by the adrenal gland. And then you have estrogen, that goes down. And estrogen uh, controls the fertility and the menstrual cycle and all that. And then progesterone, progesterone also goes down. That also is involved, involved in the second half of the menstrual cycle. And they, estrogen and progesterone work together. So um, when one goes down, they should be in certain ratios. So when women are, after menopause, they're considered estrogen dominant, which is kind of weird because it's, it goes down. What they mean is the relative ratio of estrogen to progesterone is off. So even though estrogen goes down a little bit, progesterone really goes down low. So that would be, create a situation when you're estrogen dominant. Very similar to if you were to like take, um, I don't know, uh, sodium and um, salt and potassium. They work together. So if you have too much salt and not enough potassium, you get fluid retention. But if you have, an, what you can do is you can lower salt, but you can also raise potassium and get rid of the fluid that way instead of just avoiding the salt. So there's, in other words, there's just ratios that you have to look at, okay? And these work together. But the big one that really messes people up and that's responsible for the loose skin is this growth hormone. It's called human growth hormone. Now in a, in a, child, it's mainly responsible for the growth of the child, okay? But when you become an adult, it doesn't make you keep growing. It controls other things, fat burning, tight muscles, um, energy, collagen, all the protein synthesis or creation of proteins, hair, nail, skin, muscle, all that. So growth hormone is the, really the one that goes down as you age, unfortunately. So there are people that actually take Growth hormone is a supplement, it doesn't work. Um, unless you're injected by an actual growth hormone, a synthetic growth hormone, that will work and that will actually help with your weight loss, lean body mass, and it's an anti-aging thing, but it has some slight minor side effects. It's very expensive. It's like $15,000 for every six weeks, okay? And then number two, if you take it over a period of time, your own glands shut down and you become dependent on it, and then you have to take more and you get side effects like diabetes, so there's a lot of problems with taking hormones, and that's why um, I would only recommend taking it if, as the last resort. And you get people taking HRT, hormone replacement therapy, bioidentical hormones, which again, if you take those, you're gonna con create a lot of confusion in the different organs, and so you're gonna, any hormone you, hormone you take, you indirectly shut down the gland that's supposed to produce it, so you basically put everything to sleep. Same thing with the thyroid. You take it over a period of time, and then the thyroid doesn't have to produce anymore, okay? Um, so now when we have growth hormone that goes down, this is the buffer. This is the opposing hormone to cortisol. Cortisol is the stress hormone from the adrenal. That's the one that's very destructive on your protein. So if that's too high, you get, you, your body bec becomes in a, what's called a catabolic state or a cannibalistic. It breaks down proteins faster than it's building back up. So you get loss of muscle protein in your thighs, in your butt yet you get loose skin here and here. Not a great sight, saggy skin in your belly. So really the loose skin is a combination of not enough growth hormone and too much cortisol. But remember, cortisol might test pos uh, normal in your blood, but the ratio is very, very high cortisol, low growth hormone. So even though it's normal, 
it has nothing to oppose it. It's nothing to buffer it. There's nothing to uh, kind of minimize it. So it's a, just a free cortisol that goes out there and destroys everything. So that's it's too much of this and not enough of this. So in the next part, I'm going to show you what to do about this situation. So check this out. All right, now over here, we have things to lower cortisol. Over here, we want to raise growth hormone, okay? So let's just kind of go back and forth. Cortisol is triggered by stress. So everything we're going to do is going to reduce stress. Number one, low intensive ex intensity exercise. That would be like walking. Now over here, you have to raise the high intensity because full body high intensity exercise will increase growth hormone. The problem is if you're an adrenal body type, you're, you can't do this yet. So you're going to have to do walking for a period of time because just because you're an adrenal body type doesn't mean you're always going to be an adrenal type. You want to get out of that type and shift over here to be able to increase the growth hormone, but we have to get you sleeping first to be able to handle this intensive exercise. But ideally, we want to work up to more intense exercise. So you're going to walk at first, and then as you graduate slowly or gravitate into higher intensity, you want to do high intensity, full body, short workouts with lots of rest. Now the P90X is a great workout, but I would extend that rest longer if you had an adrenal problem because the key is you could be overtraining, especially if you're doing high intensity every day and you're not sleeping, you're not going to actually lose weight. You're going to, your body's going to turn to mush. I had a lady that did the boot camp and she was just, her whole body turned to atrophy, just skin hanging on her body and just no tone at all. So that person, you, she, maybe she should work out once a week. But the whole key is recovery, okay? So you can overdo it. So we started with the low intensity exercise, walking, long walks every day, just get in your space. Um, not sitting in front of a treadmill watching TV, but getting out there. Okay, so sleep will increase, lower this and increase this. So sleep is really important. There's a lot of videos I have on sleep. There's nutrition you can take, there's techniques you can do, but um, that's for another video. But the bottom line is we need to increase sleep. I do not recommend um, staying up past 12. The optimum time to go to sleep is about 10, 30, maybe 11. But don't watch the news before you go to sleep. Watch a comedy. Uh, don't watch a scary movie. It's going to mess up your sleep. Number, number three, support the gland. Again, there's techniques I have, acupressure, nutrition. You can support the gland instead of the hormone. That would be smart. Uh, avoid stress. Mainly uh, stressful people, uh, relationships that you're involved with. Um, you know, that always messes someone up. I have a gal who's stuck with this particular individual and she can't get out of it. She's married, she has kids, and she has a situation because um, he's not willing to change. So it's a constant battle. That messes everything up. Then you compound that with menopause, not a pretty sight, okay? But we want to try to do things to avoid stressful people and situations. Potassium foods, important. That's the leafy greens, huge salads, um, not bananas or sugar. B vitamins, nutritional yeast is the best B vitamins. I would highly recommend that. Uh, these two actually lower stress. And then avoid sugar because that will raise this as well. Okay. Now over here, intense exercise, sleeping, protein does trigger growth hormone, but not a lot. If you have too much, it will increase insulin, which will inhibit this. So we want just a little bit, maybe three to four ounces each meal. And, uh, but we need some protein. If you're a vegetarian and you don't have the density of protein, it's very difficult to stimulate growth hormone. Okay? Animal meat or animal products is the best for this, but it's just, just small amounts. Okay, intermittent fasting. Now, with this one, it's not necessarily you have to fast for days, but you don't, if you actually eat all these snacks between the meals, that's messing up the liver, and that keeps the liver overworking all the time. If you did three meals a day and no snacks, that would be intermittent fasting, okay? That's what I consider intermittent fasting. Even if you did breakfast and then a good lunch and you didn't eat anything after that, that would be intermittent fasting. That will increase growth hormone. But if you're snacking and grazing, yeah. Why? Because the liver is where the growth hormone works through. So that liver is the hub, and that's connected to the digestion. So anything that is a strain on the digestion will slow the liver and slow this hormone. So if you have constipation, for example, or bloatedness or a gallbladder problem, it's going to be hard to raise this because 
growth hormone comes from the brain, goes right through there, and doesn't always work. And then the next one is the decreased cortisol. Fixing this and avoiding sugar again will also improve these. So these are kind of the basic things that I look at if a person wants to tighten up their skin and lose weight. I'm going to look at all these things. I'm going to find out which one can we implement that they're not already doing. I'm going to look for ways that I can improve things they're doing but make it better. And these are a, a kind of a good flow chart that you can use to tighten things up. And you'll see over the next months the skin will start coming back and the collagen will start coming back. One last thing, and that has to do with digestion. If your stomach is not strong enough as far as the acidity, and the way you know that it's not strong enough is you get indigestion, bloating, acid reflux, GERD. That means you don't have enough acid. Watch my videos on that. Um, then you can't break down the collagen or the protein to be able to assimilate and pull it into your skin. That could be a reason why you have loose skin too because you're just not digesting it. So if that's the situation, um, you can take something to acidify the stomach and really pull in that collagen into the cells to allow uh, your skin, nails, uh, hair, uh, collagen and come back. And a, a really acidic stomach will allow you to absorb the minerals too, especially the trace minerals. And there's other videos I have that show about what trace minerals do. But trace minerals are basically minerals needed in small amounts that allow the protein to work better in your body. And that would be one supplement that might be very helpful if you have also hair loss and brittle nails, things like that. So it's not the big thing, but it'll actually kind of assist in that area. Okay, so go ahead and try these things and uh, comment below and I will see you in the next video.